Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to do a reprocessing of CTB1 medulla nebula or garlic nebula, so please stay tuned. My name is Morten and you are watching Frost Astrophotography. What can you do when it's raining all the time? Well, you could crawl into bed, drag the covers over your head and cry yourself to sleep, but you can also revisit old data, see if you can push some more details out of it, or if you change your processing techniques, will it be a completely different image? In this video I'm revisiting CTB1, the medulla nebula or the garlic nebula or it has a lot of other names as well. I have 20 hours worth of data. I did an HOO image before but that really excluded a lot of the S2 data that I had and this time I'm trying to see if I can make a new palette using all of the data that I have and then just color calibrate it to look the way I want it to. Let's jump into PixInsight and see what we can do. We have 20 hours worth of SHO data, 84 light frames of HA, 73 of O3 and 82 of S2. And my last processing of this, I used an HOO palette, effectively excluding the S2 data that I had and I'm not so happy with that. It's both the fact that I excluded 82 light frames of 5 minutes each and the fact that my processing has changed a lot since I did this the last time. So this data is fairly old now. It was gathered during 8 sessions spanning from the 12th of November 2022 until the 4th of January 2023. 239 light frames that is. And it was with my old trusted ZWO camera which I have now upgraded to the Poseidon M Pro. But once in a while I feel like returning to these objects that I want to squeeze a little bit more out of, so to speak. So the data is fairly faint. It is a challenging object indeed. You can see the HA fairly clearly here, but the O3 here is not super clear, even though it is a little bit visible here. But we have the S2 here a lot of data that I excluded by using the HOO palette last time and I want to remedy that as well as incorporating a few processing steps that have changed since then. There are no big surprises here in the linear phase of this processing. I started with a dynamic crop. I had to crop a significant amount of data from the edges here because uh, there were some some movement uh, of the object between uh, November and January here. So started with that the dynamic or automated dynamic background extraction, the blur exterminator and noise exterminator as usual and we don't need to repeat that in detail every time but you can see the big difference here between the first 
And the last in this phase of the processing. I can do a screen transfer function here on the H alpha to see that we have fairly good data here, although it is a little bit, maybe a little bit noisy, but still we have a lot of H alpha, both in the main object here and around the main object as well. And of course we want to keep that. So this was uh, stretched using a combination of the uh, very useful tool from SETI Astro statistical stretch, follow up with a generalized hyperbolic stretch and also the uh, sketchpad IHDR that I've been using more and more. It's a very helpful little script that will let you stretch out the very last of the details in an object, but keeping uh, the highlighted areas from being overblown. And that is a very good thing. So I ended up with three starless images here, one for the oxygen three, one for the sulfur two, and one for the H alpha. Uh, all stretched here. You can see that the O3 here, it's not super much O3, but it is still visible and uh, use usable, I would say. So it's a nice starting point. If you don't know exactly which kind of palette you want to be using and you want, uh, want to get some kind of indication of how the object will look in that palette or in that mix, you can use SETI Astro's Perfect Palette Picker and that will let you get a little preview on what kind of mixes will result in what kind of image. Just make sure that you uncheck linear input data if you have stretched the image already. Then you can zoom out and you can inspect here what kind of blend do you want. Everything from the normal SHO to popular HOO down to some realistic blends and the Forex X, uh, which I am going to be using today. So one major point is that if you are selecting HOO, for example, then you are excluding S2 data and I don't want that. So just click on the Forex X here and it will create that mix for you. Now you can choose to rotate this uh, before or after you have finished uh, processing this. Uh, it is optional, but this is the original blend with the 4XX uh, palette, uh, which I was starting from. Before proceeding, I chose to rotate the object uh, 180 degrees just to make it a little bit easier to process it since I am going to keep it this way in the final image. Just remember to rotate your star frame as well so you don't integrate them uh, in a funny way with the stars upside down. The first step I took here was to do a little bit of color correction. I ended up trying to make the blue a little more deeper blue rather than the cyan tinted blue that we have here. And it was fairly successful, I would say. I was using the script uh, selective color correction for this. In that script, you can use all kinds of masks. I also tried to make the red a little bit more deeper red here in the image. It's not a major color change, but uh, I think it was fairly good. After that, I did some initial sharpening of the image. As always, I do a very subtle sharpening I don't uh, want to over sharpen things, especially with an object that is faint as this one. I ran through noise exterminator one more time, even though it 
might not be visible on the darker areas here. You can see that we have some noise left and in the image to the right here we have gotten rid of most if not all of that noise which is very good. I also opted to add a synthetic luminance but a very subtle one. I didn't go for the H alpha. I extracted the uh, luminance layer of this isolated the, the main object in the middle here and some of the prominent features in the H alpha data around the main object using a ranged mask as uh, I do in my uh, extensive processing guide. And then I ran through some additional contrast and sharpening measures on that and then integrated it back with the image here. But in order to keep the effects of the synthetic luminous layer down to a minimum, I also extracted the luminance once more, adjusted the histogram a little bit and added that as a mask on the image here just to keep the effects of the addition of the synthetic luminance down a little bit. I didn't want the effects to be too striking. So we can zoom in on an area here. You can see that I've added some contrast and sharpening in the areas here where you have some uh, ridges in that big uh, hydrogen alpha cloud so to speak. I want to try to keep uh, the effects of uh, the synthetic luminance layer down when we are dealing with uh, faint objects like this uh, in which you have uh, a lot of noise maybe or not the sharpest data. So after that I opted to do some additional uh, color calibration or corrections I might say and uh, I boosted uh, the red just a little bit more and then I opted to uh, boost the saturation and vibrance of the over overall image a little bit as well. In the final phase of the processing I stretched and combined the stars into SHO and then I color calibrated them using SPCC to make a uh, RGB-like synthetic stars. The last time I just used the H alpha stars for this object, but now I wanted them to be as uh, realistic as possible. Then I added them both together and I ended up with a result looking like this a 4xx palette image of the CTB1 medulla nebula also called the garlic uh, nebula uh, with the synthetic RGB stars 20 hours 239 5 minute light frames it will be interesting to see if I can try to capture this object again with the new Poseidon M Pro camera and see if that makes a little bit of a difference or if I have to wait until I get a better telescope to get some cleaner data on this image. It is challenging to say the least but I'm fairly happy with this. Now I feel like I can close the chapter on this target and hopefully revisit it again in the future and see what I can make of it then. Did you think I was gonna leave you hanging like this? No, of course not. We have to compare also to the previous image of the CTB1. And here you have it, the 2023 version. And uh, the big uh, difference here is of course that the left one utilizes all data, all 20 hours. In the image to the right, there's the S2 missing. I've used some more extensive uh, processing techniques on the image to the left here. 
a lot more stretching, of course. I have synthetic RGB stars instead of just HA stars. I've also used uh, a, a drizzle integration, uh, increasing the resolution uh, in the image to the left. So it is much better in every way, but it does originate from exactly the same data, interestingly enough. So you can do a very much, I would say, just by using different processing techniques, especially when it comes to stretching. Hopefully I will see you again in a processing video soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. Until the next video, I wish you have, unlike it is here, free from rain and clear skies.